Welcome back to my channel. This week, I'm going to do another rehousing video. I will do your tarantula this week. Uh, I've got one here and desperately needs a rehousing, but I have been holding off until it has molted and it has molted about a week ago and it has fed. So it's definitely at the appropriate time to be rehoused and we're gonna be rehousing it into something a little bit more appropriate, something that's a little bit more naturalistic, has some live plants in there. And uh, hopefully it doesn't ruin too much of it with its webbing. <laughs> um, so, as you can see there, it's a Phlogia species Coranda. Um, and that's a, it's a very old critter keeper that I'm going to be throwing out after this. So I'd be happy to be rid of it and gradually phase out all the critter keepers that I've got. But I've still got a few floating around. Um, so yeah, I have actually been to Coranda and I've seen quite a lot of tarantulas there. I think they have a number of species. Um, aside from the tropics, they've got... The Corandas, which are, you know, very, very closely related to the other thing they have there, which is the Phlogius uh, PQ113s. And, um, you know, where Coranda is, it's very, uh, very high altitude, but there's a lot of lush rainforest around there. They have quite a lot of cassowaries around. So a lot of what you see is basically rainforest plants and a lot of leaf litter, debris, uh, and quite a lot of moisture around. So I've tried to replicate that a little bit with this enclosure. See this kind of does uh, web quite a lot as most blogies do. And uh, yeah, it does, has been doing a fair bit of digging, so hopefully what I've provided will satisfy it. It will be able to borrow quite a lot and has plenty of points to web to. Um, so I did actually pull the malt out earlier and I, I rehydrated it a little in uh, some soapy water and this is actually a female um i know it's a bit small but yeah I, i'm pretty positive through the malt that it is a female so that's good news And there she is there. Yeah, we created a little starter burrow in the middle there and Put a few sticks and leaves around for her to web up. So hopefully she'll just go straight in.
Okay. I was hoping she'd go in the bar a bit. There she goes. Okay. So, yeah, that went pretty well. So here we have the other reject shop container. Now this video is not sponsored by the reject shop, but I, uh, I wouldn't mind a few extra containers for free. Um, but yeah, I, I can't recommend these enough. I only just found them today and they're, they're cheap uh, and they're clear. So that's kind of all I want with a container really, uh, especially bioactive enclosures with live plants in them. So the spider that I've got here is an Arbonita species trapdoor spider and uh, it's actually uh, a local spider. I collected it at my last property and I haven't been able to match it to any described species so I'll, I could just go with the the name Arbonita sparring bar. Uh, Arbonita species sparring bar. And uh, I find them really pretty. They... They create a, an open hold burrow and they often use leaf litter to create a bit of a turret and they'll just sit there on, a, on the slopes and embankments. And they've got some really beautiful gold scintillating hairs all over their body. So this is the Arbonita species burrowing bar. See if we can shine some light. You can just make out some slight gold. But in person, they're, they're very metallic gold. Uh, I'll add in some photos that I've taken in the past that really do capture it a lot better. Okay, we'll just get her in the catch cup. Okay, so we got her to go in there. And put the leaves around, so hopefully she'll create a bit of a turret out of the leaves. Web them all together. Okay, and move on to the next one. Okay, one more rehousing to do, and this one is a Namia species in the Anamidae family, uh, and this one is also found in Barring Bar, and um, once again, um, doesn't match any other known description, so we just give it the name that it's uh, where it was found. And uh, yeah, so this one is is very interesting. Um, they've got some really brilliant red legs and I'll show you in a second. So this one took me a few goes to get into the catch cup, but there she is. 
they are very fast. But yeah, you can see those those red legs and it looks like she's gonna molt out soon, so yeah, she'll look even better after a molt. She's got that nice mottled abdomen as well. And uh, once again, similar kind of setup to what I found them in at my property in Barring Bar, just a, you know, carve out of, of a pathway with a bit of a, an embankment covered in moss, lots of heavy clay, actually kind of a, kind of a dry clay, uh, compacted clay that it was found in, so, um, but it hasn't seemed to mine the, uh, the wet clay as much, but it'll dry out a little bit more. So as these are very fast and very skittish, it should just go straight into this starter burrow without any issue. They just usually want to find the, there we go, see straight into there. They usually just want to find the darkest place they can and hide there. I just wanted to quickly show my other Namia species burrowing bar enclosure. Just some basic moss in there and a similar clay setup. Though this one isn't as sloped, uh, but it doesn't seem to mind too much, it's just burrowed in there. Okay, so just moving on to the uh, last couple of enclosures that I've done. I did these earlier today, and I've just put in three Homerus wagiensis. Uh, also known as a rainforest scorpion, but their distribution is pretty widespread and they're found in dry sclerophyll and uh, all the way up to the tropics. But I've done another bioactive enclosure with some moss in this fern and uh, I've had some success with other species of scorpion, housing them communally. So hopefully this one this one works out, you can see there's one down there. That small one there is probably tripled in size since I've gotten it. That was maybe three years ago. So but they're very slow growing. And uh, there's a larger one there. There is one more as well, but I won't dig up their enclosure too much. I'll just provide a bit of an update later, see how successful this setup is with them. I think given that they're all pretty well fed and there's plenty of room to move around, I don't see how it would be any different to the black rocks or the other lycus that I've kept or even the Circoponius squama I've kept communally without any issues as well. So yeah, hopefully this works out. I might start referring to this channel as the lab. 
uh, that's kind of just what I call the room and I might actually do a room tour in the future just to kind of show my setup and uh, my shelving that I've got uh, and you'll probably notice that I have quite a lot of these Sistema Ultra Clear definitely one of my favorite containers to use for enclosures especially for bioactive enclosures anything with plants so this one I did last night and you can see in the middle there there's a bit of a a lid that is a small Euopolis species that I found a couple of nights ago. And I did actually find a larger one too. I'll put in a photo. But yeah, they, they create some really interesting thick clay lids. And it's one I actually found at my new place. So I've never actually found them before I've seen a couple of deserted burrows around here but yeah these two that I collected the other night were the first ones that I've been able to find and they can be pretty tricky to dig up and also I don't really like to dig them up too much uh, I usually try and lure out any trapdoors and then block their way back in with a with a spoon or something like that okay last enclosure for this video and once again i'll have to add in a photo but this is for chenistonia maculata and uh i wasn't able to get too much information about them but again they're in the anamidae family uh, and I've basically done a setup pretty much the same as uh, the Namia. So just something kind of to burrow under, little starter burrow. And you can see it's already covered over. Often spiders will cover over their burrow while they kind of establish and do a web lining in the burrow just to create a more stable and secure burrow. So, yeah, very similar to the Namia species. A lot of the info uh, I get, it's actually from iNaturalist photos. Uh, I get a good look at the soil and habitat, and I can use Google Earth to look at the, the habitat, the types of trees, the types of soil and terrain, and usually use that information just to create uh, a nice little enclosure. So something exciting happened. While I was recording this video and a bit earlier, I noticed that my Selena Tivis species Bowen was in the process of molting. And uh, I don't usually like to film molting. I usually just try and make it dark and quiet. And I just let her molt in peace kind of before I started doing any filming and um, was made, able to get this out. Yeah, very cool. Probably one of the most complete malts that I've gotten. You can see the carapace there. I'll try and sex it too. Usually what you're looking for is a bit of a slit. Usually you're looking for a slit called the, uh, or the epigastric uh, furrow. Hmm. 
Okay, so, I apologize if that was out of focus, but yeah, there's, there's no actual slit there, and you can see quite a bit of a bulge. So, yeah, that is a male. It's really cool. Nice little malt. Okay. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. I reckon next video we'll do a bit of a room tour and I'll show you my shelving and all my different enclosures and I'll just give a brief overview of the different species that I keep and maybe a little update on the spiders that you've seen in this video. Okay, thank you.